Hello everyone, welcome to a little video, just a little vid vid that I put together. <laughs> this isn't my normal style of video, I like to do commentaries while I'm watching a movie. Those videos are super fun because I can point things out as I go. It's kind of like improv, thinking of jokes on the fly, but I also love film and directing fascinates me as well. So when I saw the trailer for the new Netflix movie, Let It Snow, I knew I wasn't going to make a commentary on it, but I saw a joke in the trailer that was so poorly directed that it killed the joke. I think the average movie-going audience, when they watch a movie, they know what good and bad acting is. And to a degree, I think people also know what good and bad writing is. However, I think directing is a little bit more of a gray area, and I kind of want to explore that a little bit in this video. Let's talk about the characters in this movie. Fanfic Shawn Mendes, college scholarship girl with sick mom, lesbian waffle house worker, best friend one in love with best friend two, best friend two oblivious to best friend one's love, and bitch. Let's start with fanfic Shawn Mendes, and I call him that because the character is a famous musician, and I think if someone was gonna write a fanfic of them meeting Shawn Mendes, this is exactly how they would write that character. Except when this character kisses a girl, it looks like this. And when Shawn Mendes kisses a girl, it looks like this. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Let me start off by saying this guy is really good in his role. He just has a way of delivering lines that is so natural. Here's a line delivery from him that I love. Young moms, it's my sweet spot. Mm, boy, can I relate. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's touch on the first misfire that I think the director had. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ah! Did you laugh at that? Probably not. There are two mistakes here that the director made. The first, if you noticed right before they hit the bump, like three or four seconds before, the characters show fear on their faces. So you eliminated the surprise element. Listen to the guy right before they hit the bump. He goes, whoa, 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 like he's Noah Centineo. <laughs> The joke would have worked if the music is playing and we just think it's like a, a nice sweet moment Then all of a sudden, boom, hit the bump, he flies off. That's funny. But as soon as the characters tip off the audience that something bad is about to happen, you eliminate the surprise element and you take away a lot of the humor. So I'm going to re-edit this scene. The element of surprise is no longer there for you because you know both of the people are going to fly off the sled. But I think at the very least, you'll be able to see the humor behind it. Let's go. Let's go. If you notice in my re-edit, I had her flying off the sled almost immediately after he fell off. And the reason I did that is because you don't want the audience to catch up to what you're doing. See, if something unexpected happens, the audience's brains are trying to catch up, trying to figure out what happened. In the original cut, it's not a surprise when they hit a bump because the actors were tipping off the audience that something was gonna happen. But then after that happens, she has five to 10 seconds where she's veering on her sled. The audience can catch up and figure out oh, she's probably gonna fall off her sled too. So when it happens, again, it's not unexpected and it's not funny. Fast forward to the end, they solve all their problems super easily and their story ends at the Waffle House, the site of the Christmas party, where they throw aside their fears and kiss. Aw, how sweet. Let's move on to these two. They've been friends since childhood and he's in love with her. They go to a midday Christmas Eve party and they run into these two. They are brothers who the movie makes very, very clear are felons who intimidated a witness into not testifying against them. The Reston brothers? I, I thought they were in prison. I thought they went to jail. 
No, I think the witness had a change of heart. So they establish pretty clearly that they are bad dudes not to be messed with. So what does this guy do? He steals from them. Oh my god. I don't know how much you guys know about criminals, but here's one little tidbit to remember. Um, criminals don't like it when you steal from them. Best friend one doesn't get the memo though, and he steals their keg. Now, our protagonist managed to get away for now, after what is the least dramatic car chase scene of all time. But you shouldn't come to expect much when the CG on the car looks like this. It literally looks like they just got a clip art image and just moved it across the screen. Anyways, the main character's story ends at the Waffle House, the site of the Christmas party, where they have a speech for each other, they let go of their fears, and they kiss. Aw, how sweet. Before we move on to the last couple, let's go back to the twins. And this was uh, just a huge misfire to me. See, this movie is supposed to be edgy. It's like an edgy Christmas movie for teenagers. You turn on a Christmas movie, 99% of them, they are for families. Not with this movie though, because it is edgy. How do I know it's edgy? Well, for one, it's pretty uncensored. Fucking nipple bleeding? They also cover a same-sex relationship, which I haven't seen a Christmas movie do before. There's also a scene with inclusivity, where all beliefs are represented, not just Christian beliefs. And they even make a joke where feminism is the butt of the joke. You see, nowadays, it's not edgy to agree with feminism. It's edgy to make fun of someone who's being overly feministic. If, is that a, that's not a thing. <laughs> so at the end of the movie, the felon brothers end up catching best friend one with a keg. I'm gonna show you that scene. And I want you to keep in mind that these are felons who intimidated a witness. That is some mafia shit. You no, know, I swear I've seen that keg before. So I stole your keg? Come on, man, bring it on. Try me, huh? You don't know my story. You don't know where I'm from. You don't know me. Yeah, I went to piano camp. So? You know, I used to have a peanut sensitivity, but I beat it. Do you know how hard that is? Fear of raccoons? No. A couple of months of therapy and done. This guy is crazy, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yelling about raccoons and shit. Fucking nipple bleeding. Let's get this guy a drink, man. <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna say it, okay? That scene was not only painful to watch, but it gets worse every time I have to watch it. I am embarrassed for existing on the same planet that this scene was filmed on. Am I being overdramatic saying that? Maybe. Do I regret saying it? Absolutely not. We all see what the movie's trying to do, right? The day's events were supposed to be so traumatic on this guy that he just finally snaps. The criminals see that and they take a liking to him because he's crazy and they're criminals and criminals love crazy people, obviously. Except he didn't go crazy. This is the worst thing in this movie. I hate it so much. The movie has an opportunity to put this character through the ringer. Nothing really crazy happened to this guy to make him go off. Nothing. The worst thing that happened to him is that his car got stuck in a ditch for a few hours. The character did not go crazy. There was no justification for him going crazy and everything that he rants about not only is fairly normal shit, but it has nothing to do with what we saw today. Just because you talk about a peanut allergy and therapy doesn't make people think you're crazy. What the movie should have done is had him get hit in the face at some point, give him a black eye, mess up his hair, put his clothes in tatters, and then have him go off where he's like, enough, I've had enough, fuck me up, I don't care. And then the brothers could reasonably be like, you know what, I respect this. It's Christmas Eve, let's let it slide. But by being like, I had a fear of raccoons, got over that, so clearly I am crazy. What the fuck, what are you talking about, movie? I am pissed at you. Get off my screen! I suppose we need to talk about bitch. Uh... Yeah, she's a bitch. <laughs> the movie begins with Waffle House Girl literally bringing bitch along to go buy her a present. So Waffle House Girl is going to buy bitch a pig. Because they love pigs, I guess. That's just a thing that they love. So Waffle House Girl is like, I'm gonna do something nice for my friend. I'm gonna buy her a pig. So let's go to the pet store and go buy it. And for some reason, 
out of nowhere, bitch starts making fun of a sh complete stranger. But Waffle House girl doesn't want to make fun of her. She's like, oh, maybe she's not a bad person. And bitch loses it. She's like, maybe you think she's not a loser because you're a loser, loser. And I remind you, she's literally being driven to go get her gift. She's just the worst. And of course, ironically, she gets out of the car only to be picked up by the only person willing to pick her up, and that's the weird person that she was making fun of. To be honest, I cannot be mad at this part, at this plot development, because this tinfoil lady actually ends up being the funniest part of the movie. She is absolutely hilarious. But we need to go back to bitch because I need to talk about the next directing misfire. She's dropped off at the Waffle House where her boyfriend is hanging out on Christmas Eve with his other teenage friends. Because why wouldn't you hang out at a Waffle House on Christmas Eve? Also, just a little side note, this guy is the oldest person that we see at the Waffle House all day. Employees, customers, all day. He's like 23, maybe? They're just no old people at all. And all the people that are at the Waffle House in the middle of the day stay there throughout the night. They are there for the evening party as well. Even though the party came together last minute, none of them went to the Waffle House knowing that there was going to be a party there later. For some reason, these teenagers all day Christmas Eve just hanging out at a Waffle House. Dog, what? Do none of you have families? Is this city filled with orphans? Anyways, bitch runs into her boyfriend, and this girl just super subtly calls her a psycho. A psycho. No idea how everybody in the Waffle House hears that, because she was super discreet about it. And this is how the cheerleaders react to her calling bitch a psycho. Oh, she did not just call that girl a psycho. She legit just called her a psycho. <laughs> girl! Do you see how there was no creativity to that one wide shot whatsoever? That's a problem. See, camera work should be at a premium there. I took the liberty of editing it once more, adding a little bit more creativity. I called you a psycho. Oh, she did not just call that girl a psycho. She legit just called her a psycho. <gasps> girl! That was me just five minutes in post-production. Imagine if you actually had some vision while you were on set. You could do infinitely cool things with that setup and joke. Because it just doesn't work. One wide shot for these sassy cheerleaders, it just doesn't work. It's not enough. Going back to Bitch's character, the problem with her is that her personality is just told to us. Waffle House Girl just lays into her and then starts revealing things about her character that I had no idea. They were not set up, they were not hinted at. All of a sudden, it's just here. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your insane need for attention from people who don't seem to give a shit about you. If Jeff breaks up with you, you'll just find someone else to chase after and freak out about, and I'll still be here. Same as always, waiting to do this all over again, just hoping you finally figure out how to stop caring about people that don't care about you. And it makes sense. They say that her mom is not around, and I don't think she likes her daughter very much, so it makes sense for her to, like, hop from guy to guy, anyone who will give her attention to make up for that deficiency in her life. But here's an idea, movie. Uh... Show it! The last love story is honestly the best one. It is Waffle House Girl and Cheerleader number one. The entire movie, Cheerleader is just playing Waffle House Girl hot and cold. When she's in front of her friends, she's extremely cold. And when they're in private, extremely hot. Emphasis on hot. <laughs> That's a joke, God. I know they're teenagers. Jesus. Their story ends at the Waffle House, the site of the Christmas party, where they have speeches for each other, they let go of their fears, and kiss. Aw, how sweet. Hey, by the way, have you noticed a trend? Cause I have. You have three separate love stories. The only difference in how they end is the location at the Waffle House. One couple kisses in the middle of the Waffle House, one couple kisses on the roof of the Waffle House, and the other couple kisses in the parking lot of the Waffle House. Why have three relationships if they're all gonna end the same way? I should also mention that I tried to re-edit the scene from the trailer to try to give that joke a little bit more punch to make it better. I couldn't quite do it because there wasn't enough coverage on one person. This is the joke. I'll, I'll, I'll play the clip and I'll tell you what I would have done. In fact, I'll show you what I did and what it would, the intention was. Have you ever been with someone and you stay up until like 4 a.m. just talking about everything? Like how you're both super scared of getting old and what it felt like the first time you saw the Goblet of Fire and you're just like, I can't believe I get to exist at the same time as you? No. 
but like I'm really happy for you. Okay, so that was the original and the premise pretty simple The girls going off on one of those cliche like have you ever connected with someone so deep and so much and then the other person is like no, it's actually a funny joke if executed properly. However, the movie doesn't do a good job of that because the camera is focused on the wrong person for too long. While the girl is giving the speech, the joke is more about the guy listening. So you needed a shot on him where he was seemingly being moved by what she was saying and then pull back and be like, I don't know what you're talking about. So here's what I tried to do with it. However, there was no shots of him just listening. So I, I, <laughs> I had to improvise. It doesn't look very good. I wasn't going to include it. However, this was the joke from the trailer that originally made me do this in the first place. So here's the re-edited version. Have you ever been with someone and you stay up until like 4 a.m. just talking about everything? Like how you're both super scared of getting old and what it felt like the first time you saw the Goblet of Fire and you're just like, I can't believe I get to exist at the same time as you? No, but... Like, I'm really happy for you. At the very least, you could kind of see what I was trying to do. I added some background music as well to add some more punch to, like, the magical feeling that she was feeling. Whew, okay. Uh, this is just kind of the unwind time. I don't want you to get the idea that I think the movie was poorly directed. Because I don't think that. I think it was slightly above average, but I just think that there was a lot of missed opportunities. The performances were good. And even though these characters were all getting into, like, unbelievable situations, it was still entertaining. I just think... Think that there was some creativity that was missing for some of the shots and I would have liked to have seen them do a little bit more with those things. Let me know if you guys like this kind of video. I enjoyed putting this together because it's a little bit more analytical than I usually do. <laughs> it would be so funny if you guys were like, yeah, the, all those re-edited scenes were just way worse. <laughs> and that's why you do commentaries for movies instead of make them. <laughs> if you guys would like to see more of this kind of video, let me know. And also if... um, And also if... What was I going to say? <laughs> and also, if you have any feedback for me, just leave it in the comment section. I'd like to make this better if I do continue it, just by hearing what you guys liked and disliked about the, the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, though. I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Toodles! <laughs> that works way less well when you can't see me. <laughs>